So how do you tell if your lithium battery is okay or if it's something else in your motorhome? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this uh, very brief episode we're going to talk through the process that we follow to debug whether there's an issue with the battery or whether there is something strange going on in the motorhome. So recently we had a situation where somebody ha had been recording quite a lot of detail as to what the battery was doing and was experiencing some strange results that he couldn't explain and when we looked at all of his facts and figures uh, we couldn't explain it either so we thought we'd do the sensible thing and start checking to see what his battery was actually doing whether it was something in the van or something in the battery or both and uh, we thought we'd do this video just to show you through the process that we follow when we have a strange situation like that. So the fundamental problem was that he felt that the battery was running down too fast and that he didn't actually have the outflowing current you know coming from the battery into anything and couldn't understand why the battery went from a, I think he said somewhere around a 50% state of charge to a 30% state of charge in just a day or two or a few days when as far as he was concerned nothing was actually drawing off the battery. So we started off just by getting an idea of what the various current draws were in his motorhome just so that we had an idea of what could have flattened the battery over a period of about a week, few days. And we basically identified a, a number of things that in his motorhome could be a drawing current. So firstly, probably something that people don't give much consideration to is the infotainment center. That was drawing, if I recall, sort of two or three amps just to be running on standby. And if you do the maths, if you divide, let's say he had a 280 amp hour battery, and if you divide that by say three amps, you're going to be you know, within 60 hours of running, you're going to completely flatten that battery. So three or four days and you will totally flatten the battery just by keeping a, an infotainment center that's drawing three amps. So we checked that. We checked to see what his lights would be doing. This was a really bright motorhome, really nice lights, but they were drawing about five amps just to run, run all of the lights in the motorhome. Could split them into two lots of lights and the ones that they really like to run we're drawing about two to three amps and the other lights we're drawing about two amps. So five amps for all of the lights in total. And that's a considerable amount. That's only going to give you about two or so days of runtime on your battery, on your 280 amp hour battery if you're not replenishing it. Then there were a few other items such as the heater. We we turned everything else off and ran the heater in isolation. And of course with the heater it depends how how hard the fan is working. So this is a in this particular case this is a Truma heater and the the Truma heater if the fan is running full blast will be drawing about three amps in well it's two and a half to three amps for the 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 overall usage for the heater but realistically you're not going to heat your van up that much and if you're storing it you're probably going to keep it at about five to ten degrees centigrade just to stop your jams of jar your, your jars of jam rather freezing or something like that and funny enough everybody thinks about honey freezing but honey's got so little moisture it never freezes but your jam definitely so you'd want to keep your your van sort of five to ten degrees or so to stop everything freezing in there even if you have winterized it you know the alternative is you make sure you take absolutely everything out that could freeze and split and break and that sort of thing so heater for the most part we think would be drawing sort of on on average well under an amp and so you're probably talking about half an amp that this thing is drawing and and coming on intermittently during the day so we had a we had a good look we spent probably an hour trying different things checking to see what current is flowing out of the BMS uh, and then of course th there was time to to start looking to see how accurate the battery is. So we needed to have this idea of what different things in the motorhome could be drawing the power but then of course we wanted to take the battery out and actually check to see that things are okay with the battery. So how do you test such a battery? As I said I'll take you to the battery shortly but I wanted to take you through two tools that we find invaluable. The first one is this capacity tester. I don't know what make it is but uh, you can buy them off eBay and you can buy them off several places we've got about uh, eight of these things and they are really really handy you've got these two knobs that you, you well you can set various things up when you plug it in uh, this comes alive and you can set the the amount of current that you're drawing off the fan spins up and basically this just bleeds power out of the battery by running some resistors and it shows you how much it's actually drawn off and so a very very handy tool these are about sort of between 20 and 40 pounds or dollars uh, similar sort of price I, I would highly recommend 
recommend to anybody that is wanting just to test the capacity of their battery to see that it's okay or just to debug something of the battery. This is a really handy bit of kit to have. A really nice elementary little tester. The second thing that I would highly recommend is the Victron Smart Shunt and you can use the two together so you can actually feed from the battery you know, so the battery comes into here and then this to your system, this would actually go to your negative there. So you'd obviously need a different size lug. Basically, so run through the shunt to your tester and that would give you two points of reference. They're not going to be exactly the same because this takes into account pukit and various things. This doesn't, but it would give you an idea of what they're saying. And what you'd be able to do, especially if you use all three, so the battery management system, the, the smart shunt and the tester, is that you would have a three different devices to tell you how much is going in or out of the battery. So you'd start by fully charging the battery and you need to charge it thoroughly with a proper lithium charger. So your charger must be running, let's say for argument's sake at 14.2, let's say your battery is set to 14.2. So you charge it fully and bear in mind that some of these chargers that are, are high amperage push the voltage up on the battery just because they're pumping in so hard. The battery won't actually be full but you'll reach a, a cutoff point and a high voltage cutoff in one of the cells. So you need to to slow the charge down and just let it run for a few hours and get to a what is definitely a full 100% state of charge. And once you've done that, you can then connect these up. So I'm going to take you to where we're actually doing the testing on the battery and you'll get an idea of what we found there. So in here, we have uh, our sort of heated booth. We've got a little heater in the back there. We've got the battery in question that we've been checking out just to see what's happening. And the reason we've put it in this booth is just because it's pretty cold. And in terms of wanting to know what the true capacity is of, of this right now, we need to make sure that we're running the cells at least above 15, but closer to 20 degrees would be better. See the, the heater was just clicked in because I opened the door. So this is nice and toasty and there's a battery that we're busy testing out. It's coming out to the moment to this tester that is busy running and as you can see we have reached 252 amp hours if you can see the figure there. So the battery is currently at the tester is 12.4. If I could show you on the app quickly it's 12.58 so we're losing a little bit down the wire that's quite normal. Uh, losing a little bit down there and running 13.5 amps out of here, 14.2 at this point here. So 252 amp hours and as you can see on the app the remain, remaining capacity is 0.0, .0 so we reached zero at, uh, we, we actually reached this where when that was saying 240 amp hours we reached a zero capacity so and this thing is still running the voltage is fairly indicative of something that's still sort of around about the uh, the, the 20 percent 20 30 percent mark and so what we have concluded from this so running this tester just with the BMS so far what we have concluded with this is that the the shunt in the BMS is actually not counting the, the the coulombs going in or out accurately. We saw this when we first charged it up, so it, it thought it had reached 100%, but it actually carried on charging for quite some time after that. And now we've, uh, in in terms of draining, the battery reached what it thought was a 0% capacity left, but actually in terms of the voltage of the cells, there is still quite a lot to go. So a difference actually of 40 amp hours between the tester and the battery. So from this, we must conclude that there is actually something going Going on with the shunt the coulomb counter uh, that is built into the BMS. Uh, we're not too happy with that so that's going to need to be we need to, to change the BMS out. What we are actually going to do is the next step we're going to actually feed from the battery to the smart shunt and back to there but we want to connect the smart shunt up uh, when we charge this battery back up because we want to see exactly how much we've put back into the battery and actually count how much has gone in and then we're going to rerun the capacity test check to see how much has gone out of the battery and just to see if if the BMS as we strongly suspect the BMS shunt in the BMS or the coulomb counter in the BMS is not counting that accurately. This goes uh, sort of over and above just the, the differences in, in say Puket and that sort of thing. On a 280 amp hour battery a difference of 40 amp hours is, is a very significant difference between what the BMS is reporting and the tester is reporting. And we know this tester is accurate because we've used it uh, loads of times on other, other things and we have run it alongside Smart Shunt on regular occasions. We actually test all of our testers out against a, a known current draw. We've run it a, against a clamp meter and that sort of thing. So
So we know that the tester is actually quite accurate, even though it loses a little bit on the uh, 13 amps that it's drawing or 14 amps that it's drawing across these six millimeter wires, uh, that's negligible. So we know that that is accurate. So actually we already do know that the BMS is not as we would want it to be and needs to be replaced. But yeah, we'll be doing that comprehensive test. So hopefully uh, if you're experiencing issues with the battery, this, this would kind of help you. What I would stress is that there's a limit to how much you can actually debug and find out in your motorhome or in your boat or whatever you've got the battery in. If you really want to know what's going on and have complete total peace of mind that everything is running exactly as it should, you really do need to bench the battery. So you need to get it out of that situation, put it on a bench, charge it uh, with a proper charger for that particular profile. So in this case, the lithium ion phosphate profile. So it needs to charge to 14.2 volts. You need to make sure that it is fully totally charged to 100% state of charge and then run your capacity test. After that you can you will then know exactly what the battery is doing and how accurate it is and then helps that that helps then to debug other things. Of course it does mean that your battery is going to be out of your vehicle or your boat for probably a week while you do all of this so you might want to just borrow a you know, cheap lead acid from somebody or buy a cheap one and just put it in, in place that you can run your heater or run your electrics and not have your radio doing funny things and what have you. So that's what we'd recommend. Get the battery on the bench for and, and just decide that it's going to be there for a full week while you debug. Run these tests and gain confidence that your battery is doing what it should do. When you put it back into the vehicle, then the battery is a complete known. You know exactly what it's doing, what it's not doing. You can run the test at high and low current. So, uh, you know, you could even just use the smart chain to run a very high current draw, say 100 amps, and it'll flatten it in just a few hours. And you can do a far slower burn than we've done now, say five amps, just to see what it does then. And you could even then decide that you're gonna do like a two or three day test running at even lower amperage, which would kind of simulate Simulate more a like a parasitic draw in the motorhome, so something that's drawing two or three amps. So not a bad idea, even though it does take several days to do that kind of test, not a bad idea to do that. And at the end of that, you will have a very good idea of what the battery is, and that becomes a known. And then in the whole scheme of what on earth is going on, you've got a very, you know, well-established known, which is the battery and the rest, then you can debug and know that it's something in the motorhome or the boat or whatever. So hopefully that will help, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.